this flow chart describes the simplified approach to the differential diagnosis of diabetes insipidus if a patient presents with the symptoms like urinary frequency frequent urination at night that is nocturia and inability to control urination that is enuresis and excessive thirst then the diseases that come in our mind are nephrogenic diabetes insipidus primary polydipsia pituitary diabetes insipidus or genito urinary abnormality so to know what is causing these symptoms we have to go through certain investigations the first thing to be done is to measure 24 hour urine volume and osmolarity and this should be measured on unrestricted fluid intake that is fluid should be taken as usual if the volume urine volume is less than 40 ml per kg and osmolarity is greater than 300 ml osmos per liter that is concentrated urine then genito urinary abnormality should be evaluated the diseases of genito urinary tract that can that can cause our symptoms are benign prostatic hyperplasia urinary tract infections or bladder stones but if urine volume is greater than 40 ml per kg and osmolarity is less than 300 ml osmos per liter that is dilute urine then basal plasma arginine vasopressin should be measured if it is greater than 1 picogram per ml then it is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus because ads is either normal or is increased in nephrogenic diabetes insipidus but if it is less than 1 picogram per ml it can be either primary polydipsia or pituitary diabetes insipidus to know this an important investigation is brain mri in brain mri t1 t1 weighted mid sagittal mri pituitary bright spot should be seen so what is this pituitary bright spot here in the this is t1 weighted mid sagittal image in mri here is shown and this is anterior pituitary gland and this bright spot is posterior pituitary gland this is posterior this is posterior pituitary gland that is emitting hyper intense signal this is the pituitary bright spot it is present in normal subjects as well as in primary polydipsia but it is absent in diabetes insipidus whether it is pituitary or nephrogenic so if pituitary bright spot is present then it is primary polydipsia but if it is absent then pituitary diabetes insipidus next thing next information that brain mri gives is anatomy so in case of pituitary diabetes insipidus or dipsogenic type of primary polydipsia it can give uh, the information about the cause like tumors infiltrative disorders like amyloidosis so this is about the differential diagnosis and an important thing is that if nephrogenic diabetes insipidus is confirmed then other required investigations are plasma electrolytes to know whether hypokalemia is causing the nephrogenic diabetes insipidus other investigation is calcium level in the blood or urine that is hypercalcemia and hypercalciuria and ultrasound of the kidneys to know the chronic kidney disease that is causing nephrogenic diabetes insipidus